yes lads welcome back to another vid so uh yeah i'm still in lake district and yeah having a good time with casey and uh, yeah so a bit of a uh, bit of a rundown of recent events um my fiesta so the day before we came to lake district my fiesta's gearbox went <coughs> hashtag chocolate gearbox so um yeah, so my uh, my parents very nicely let me take their Nissan Duke Nismo RS. So I thought, well, seems I've got it for a week. I might as well I might as well do a do a review on it. So uh, first impressions, so my brother's got the manual version of this, so not the RS, it's just the Nismo one, because I think the RS only comes in automatic, I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, so I've driven his, and obviously I've driven this, and his feels quicker. Now, his has, only, his has got 200 brake horsepower, and it's got 214. Um, but I think it's the gearbox, like, the gearbox in this car is weird, really is weird. But yeah, and Sport, Sport absolutely drinks fuel, so I've had, I've been driving in Eco, and it's still drinking fuel, it's like, it's stupid. But it is a nice car to drive, and we're lucky that we're in it, because uh, we're in snow at the moment, and it's got four wheel drive, so... That's that's a uh, that's a good option. Right, so let's go through some of the features. So um, I'll start down here. So I said before, got two wheel drive, four wheel drive V, which I don't know what it means. If anyone does know what it means, please let me know and four-wheel drive so uh, obviously driving up here in snow you four-wheel drive on um automatic wing mirrors tire pressures i think this is like a pedestrian safety thing where it lets you know if people are stepping out and also catch control uh, come over here it's got cruise control it's also got a speed limiter and all your basic um phone and music sort of controls now over here i like this so my brother's car doesn't have this so this must only come in the rs very nice finish got it down here as well yeah so yeah so you've got got three modes Let me just uh, turn them off. Right. yeah so you've got your normal which shows you a dial for your torque and obviously your battery and then you've got your sport which again just shows you a boost bar, no PSI in it, which is a bit sad, but basically whenever you floor it, that boost will go to the end anyway. And you've got your Eco, which tells you how economical your car's being when you're driving it. Now, for some reason, when this is in Eco and Cruise Control, it comes up as like two or three stars when you think, oh, that should be five stars because I'm in Cruise Control. So it is a bit weird. And driving it in four wheel drive seems to drink a lot more fuel than usual. Now, come over here and look at the uh, the fuel bar. I filled this up yesterday with 40 quid. Bearing in mind, it was just below a half and it took 40 quid. So I think it's a 60 to 70 pound tank. 
and I've literally I've driven for an hour today, hour and a half, and it's already drunk half a tank, which is a uh, which is a bit sad. So the fuel is actually yeah, there you go, 24 mpg. It's actually shocking. So again, let's go through the uh, control. So you got, what's camera do? Oh, didn't know that was on there. There you go. You got a 360 view, and then obviously your rear view, and you've got the map and navigation and all that crap. So yeah, let's get to let's get to driving it now. All right. So before I drive it, I'm going to explain what I mean by it's got a weird gearbox. So. This has happened a couple of times. I've been driving it in eco, and it'll go, it'll only go from three to four thousand revs, and then change gear, go back to three, go to four. So I think that's just the gear ratio. But obviously, I I obviously drive manual and stuff, but I drive automatics and work. But this, this just feels it just feels weird, like how it's been engineered. And when you're in sport, sometimes it won't change gear. Even when you're in, so not in semi-automatic, in fully automatic, it won't change gear. So I've been going on like dual carriageways, reaching 70, and it's just been staying at 6,500 revs, not changing gear, and I've had to do it with a flapping paddle. So I don't know if it's a fault with the car or whether it's just how it was designed, but it just feels, it does feel weird to drive, it really does. Right, so um, I forgot to bring my sticky thing for the window so Kate is gonna have to hold the phone oh yes right let's get her let's get out of this car as right, so i'm driving at the moment it's in it's in eco right, it's in four wheel drive because i'm in uh i'm in sludge bloody hell and it's still uh it's still spinning I think we should go right here, don't you? Or should we go down the uh, go down the pass? Go down the pass? It's up to you. Does it look uh, it looks slippery? Yeah. I'm going forward driving it, okay? Let's go. I'm glad it's frozen. Yeah, it looks alright. Right, this isn't the best place to drive under review, is it? <laughs> really, isn't it? But yeah, one thing I've got to say is, from driving this car around the latest ship with all the tight lanes and stuff like that, it does handle very well. It sticks to the road. It really does. And that's uh... See, so even in eco, it's it's still quick, but you'll notice if you, if you ever drive one. Oh my God, the sheep <laughs> in the road. Oh my God. Bloody hell, what are you doing? Move! What are they doing? Bloody hell, what are you doing? Come on. Don't, don't walk out, because I'd, I'd love to have Lamferty. I really would. Don't walk out in that road, son. Don't do it, it's not worth it. Oh, bloody hell, that's tight. I'm not used to driving such a big, obviously I drive like big vehicles in work and that, but like driving it for a full week around tight bends around the Lake District isn't really the, uh, the best way to get used to the car. But, um, yeah, so going back to the three modes. So we drive it in eco, basically to get the car moving, you've basically got you got to put your foot to the floor because it it won't move otherwise. It'll just um, it'll just gradually get you there. But when you stick it in sport, when you literally touch the throttle, the boost is straight on. So. <laughs> Oh my god! Sorry, lads, there's a lot of sheep here. <laughs> you need to move yourself. Yeah, so. Yeah, so as you, I'll stick it in sport now and I'll explain it. So, as you touch the throttle, you basically, you're straight on power. Like, it puts you straight on boost. Like, so. I've got to say the. Uh, oh, hi! <laughs> Hello! Excuse me! I'm speaking to you. Alright, well, uh, that's rude. Let's go and to buy two sheep. It's, lads, it's a Mexican standoff. Yeah, I need to move. Oh, see in a bit. Have a nice life. So, 
So, what I'll do is, it's starting to rain, yeah, or it's snow, or whatever it is, that's the So, yeah, so, let's stick it in sport, and I'll put it in two-wheel drive, because uh, four-wheel drive drinks fuel, and oh my god, oh my god. So, from when I started filming, I was on half a tank, I am now on, like, nearly a quarter, that's, uh, that's shocking, that. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give you a view of what it looks like in sport. So, talking about whether I'd buy one, um, I don't know, I think I prefer driving my brothers and his motor to be, to be completely honest, although it is nice to have like the automatic lazy feature where you can just put your foot down and you know, your power's there, don't have to change gear or whatever, but in my opinion, the, the manual Nismo is quicker and is nicer to drive and it does have a nice gearbox in it with a good clutch and uh, if you wanted to drive it faster than you can do obviously but I'm saying that it is nice to have my brother doesn't have four wheel drive and stuff like that but in my personal opinion I'd have a I'd have a manual Nismo over this automatic Nismo RS so the inside is quite like flimsy so my brother's recently broke the centre console here he basically leant on it and it snapped. Um, other bits that I can see that are flimsy in this is the, uh, the gear knob there. It's just, uh, it's quite loose. And yeah, so the inside doesn't feel like it's been put together nice. Obviously the seats are, the seats are really nice. Ooh. I'm gonna put it back in, uh, put it back in eco now because uh, I'm not liking watching my fuel go down. So yeah lads, if you have driven an Nismo RS, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Um, so this is for just a quick overview of the car. Um, I don't really have much time to go into much detail about anything else. But it is just my initial sort of feeling towards the car. I've, had, I've been driving this car for what was it, two, three days now? So I've, I've, got, I've got used to driving it. And I think I will be a bit sad when I go back to my Fiesta because this is actually faster than the Fiesta. But, yeah, it is a nice car overall, but as I say, obviously I'd rather have manual, I really would. I think if you're going to go for automatic, I'd get a Golf R or something. Obviously this isn't like up in the same place as where a Golf R is and not the same sort of area. Obviously with S3 isn't that, but for the same price my parents bought this for, so my, I think my parents paid about 17 and a half for this. It's an 18 plate and it had about 8,000 miles on it, 7,000 miles on it, I'm not too sure. But then again, as soon as my dad bought it, I told him that you wasted your money and you should have just got a Golf R to be honest, because uh, you could have picked the Golf R up there for about, with about 30,000, 40,000 miles on it, in good condition. And then again, do you know what I mean? That's just, that's just my perspective, because that's what I want next. But yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll end the video there, lads. Thanks for watching. If you want to see any more reviews on any cars or you want me to do a review on your car, just uh, add me on Snapchat or Instagram and give me a message and we can arrange something. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys soon.